Alright, we've talked about the rocks and the dirt. Now we're moving on to the air. I'm going to talk today about um, Earth's atmosphere and then talk about the structure of the different layers. So you want to know the structure and the composition of each of the layers of the atmosphere. You want to know that most of our atmosphere is actually nitrogen. Um, only 21% of it is oxygen and then the other gases like argon, carbon dioxide, and make up a very, very small portion. The layers of the atmosphere are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. Uh, you don't need to know the distances, um, but they're just there to kind of help you sh see, like, uh, you know, basically how large the, the different layers are. They are separated based on their temperature. So as you go up the troposphere, it's going to get colder, and then it's going to get warmer, and then colder and then continue to get really, really warm. I'll talk in each slide about why. In the troposphere, that is the layer around you and I. That's where we are, where all the weather is, um, and Mount Everest. So we think of Mount Everest as being the tallest thing ever, um, but really it's just, it's just like up to the top of the first layer of the atmosphere. So there's way more stuff past that. Um, but this is, you know, what we associate with air because that's, Again, the air around us. Um, it's as far as planes will go. It also has the highest pressure because of the, the most particles. Um, so currently right now there's about 14 pounds uh, per square inch that is being exerted on our bodies because of the air pressure. But we're just used to it because we have the same pressure of air in our lungs and our bodies have adapted to this, this amount of pressure. So we're good. All right. As you go up in the altitude, the temperature is going to decrease. And the reason why is kind of like as you get further away from a campfire. It gets colder and colder and colder because that heat can't radi radiate out to you. So when the sun strikes the surface of the earth, the, the solar energy is absorbed, but then it releases infrared radiation. So remember, there are multiple types of light within sunlight. There's infrared, there's UV, there's visible light, and there's all, there's all sorts of stuff. And then each kind of piece of light has its own properties. So infrared radiation is the part of light that is the heat. So it releases the heat, but then the further away you get from that source of heat, the colder it's going to get. Same thing as you're backing away from a campfire. That heat, the infrared radiation can't reach you, and so it gets colder. And that's the same that we see with the troposphere. And if it wasn't for some of the things that we're going to talk about in the other, other um, layers, you'd see the same thing. But there's other stuff going on. That's why it gets a little more complicated. Next layer up, we have the stratosphere. And the stratosphere, the big thing to know with that is that's where the ozone layer is. The ozone layer is there to absorb most of that UV radiation. Again, there are pieces to light, and that piece like the, the UV radiation piece gets absorbed by the ozone layer. Later on in the year, we're going to talk more about ozone depletion. So please remember this. It is in the stratosphere. It's very important. We send weather balloons up this high. And with the stratosphere, things get a little different. So now instead of cooling as we get further up in the stratosphere, it actually begins to get warmer. And this has to do with the ozone layer. So as the um, as these ozone molecules absorb UV radiation, it does this cool little chemical thing where it releases infrared radiation to the surrounding air. So the surrounding air it gets actually warmer. It's pretty cool. Then we go up to the mesosphere. The mesosphere is where meteors are, and now that there's no more ozone. Um, and so it's far away from the ozone, it's even further away from the surface of the Earth. We go back to seeing the same trend as before, the altitude increases, the temperature begins to decrease. Next layer up is the thermosphere, that's where we have most of the lower orbiting satellites, um, International Space Station, um, and it's also where the Aurora, Aurora Borealis is. And here things get a little weird. So there are less particles in space. And so the density of the particles is very, very small up here. 
um, but they're getting energy from the sun, and there's just basically no nothing around these particles for it to run into and transfer its energy. So these particles just get all this, this energy, and they just can keep on moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. So because temperature is a measurement of the the average kinetic energy of the molecules, we see that temperature is actually going to increase because of those particles, they're all moving really fast. Now that being said, this is what gets, re gets really confusing, is if you were to be out there and you can somehow survive without a spacesuit or whatever, or maybe you just take your glove off or something, it would actually still be cold to you. And that's because there are so few particles. So there's not a lot of particles hitting your skin, and there's, so there's not a lot of particles transferring energy into your skin, so therefore you'd still see it as cold. You perceive it as cold, even though temperature is actually warmer because there's more kinetic energy in those particles. It's really hard to explain, but there you go. I did my best. Once you get to the exosphere, it's pretty much space. There's still some particles in here, but that's, that's kind of where like the line gets a little blurry, like where does Earth begin, where does space start, it's kind of somewhere in here. Um, very small particle density, and we're still seeing that temperature increase, such as something like 1700 degrees Celsius, which is really hot, you know, like boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius, so this is 17 times the temperature of boiling water, hot. But again, it still feels cold to you, because it's... Science is confusing like that. All right, now go ahead and summarize the structure and composition of the Earth's atmosphere. 